how do you get awesome 360 video shots at night? Shooting in low light isn't easy because it produces some big problems that you wouldn't have to deal with during the day. The biggest ones being shots that are too dark, too blurry, too grainy, lights that are too overexposed, or lights that keep flickering. So in this video, Mr. Ben will teach you how to overcome all of these obstacles and get awesome shots like the ones in the opening montage. Big thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. I'll link the camera I'm using, the One RS one inch as well as other 360 gear down below. How cool is the new sign by the way? I got it custom made. So to achieve the perfect exposure for low light 360 video, shooting in manual mode is a must. When you shoot in auto, the camera guesses the settings and at nighttime gets it very wrong, which results in too much noise, blur and overexposure of any lights that might be in your scene. Now each situation you shoot in 360 is going to have varying amounts of light, meaning you're going to have to set the exposure exposure manually at each new location you visit because no two locations will be the same. Be sure to use the mobile app preview to get a sense of where your exposure is at while you're shooting. Now let's go through the manual settings one by one. So firstly with whichever camera you're using make sure the resolution is set to maximum. With the One RS 1 inch 360 that's 6k, with other cameras it's around 5.7k. Next we'll tackle exposure settings and this is done in a very similar way to how you'd expose shots when shooting with the DSLR. The biggest difference being you can't set the aperture for most point and shoot 360 cameras. But there are two other major settings that will strongly influence how your shots turn out. The first one is ISO. Turning up the ISO turns up the brightness, but it also turns up the grain. Also, I found turning this up too far in some situations leads to strobing. Hence why the goal in any situation you shoot should always be to keep your ISO as low as possible. The next big setting is shutter speed, and this is what's causing your shots to be blurred at night. The reason they're blurry is because auto exposure chooses a low shutter speed which doesn't capture motion very well. With way more light during the day these settings would work but at night time you'll need to make it much faster in order to capture movement sharply as well as avoiding motion blur while shooting handheld. The shutter speed you choose can also cause flickering and these settings are slightly different depending on where you are in the world so when you're shooting always check to make sure your shots aren't flickering. If they are change the shutter speed to one above or one below where you're currently at. As long as it's in the higher ranges, ideally between 50 and 100. The final manual setting is white balance and I'd recommend choosing this manually, which is very easy to do in the app. And I just set it by taking a look at my scene, then taking a look at my phone and adjusting accordingly. Now it's time to shoot. An important point I want to stress is that you don't need to expose perfectly while you're shooting. This is because if you bring up the brightness too much while you're shooting, it's very likely going to result in more noise and more blood. Blur. Whereas don't forget, you can color correct these shots to bring the exposure up or down later. Now let's put all of this to the test. So my first scene is here in Sydney at the grounds of Alexandria, which is an awesome place I strongly recommend visiting if you're ever in Sydney. And I started in an area where the low light was still relatively bright. So going back to the rules I talked about before, when shooting on a monopod, I chose to use a 1 50th of a second shutter speed with ISO 400. Basically this gives me the best of both worlds, letting in plenty of light without compromising on grain or blur. And this shot turned out super well. Now in the same situation this time, I'll be moving with the monopod in my hand, which is why I changed the shutter speed to 1 100th of a second, which made the shot darker, but I upped the ISO to 800 to compensate. And again, that shot is looking very good. Now let's try a hard one. In this next scene, the light was so dark that I had to make some big changes to my settings in order to get any kind of shot. So with the camera on a monopod, again, I chose 1 50th of a second for shutter speed since it was way less likely to have any kind of motion blur and I had to crank up my ISO to 1000. This made it just bright enough to color correct. When shooting this same shot handheld, this was definitely a challenge because I had to bring the shutter speed up to 1 100th of a second and to compensate, I had to bring up that ISO. I had no choice. So up it went to 1600. And after color correction, this shot looks absolutely fantastic. If I had have left this to auto, the results would be way worse. So don't be afraid to crank up the ISO a little bit if you have to. As long as your shutter speed is fast, having more ISO will mean essentially more light without the blur. And I even found when I pushed the ISO with the one inch 360 up to ISO 3200, it wasn't even that grainy. This is because of the one inch 
range sensors handling low light a lot better than the average 360 camera that has smaller sensors. Now, as I said, underexposing your shots will keep the brightest lights in your scene under control. But how much should you underexpose? Well, here are four shots side by side. I manually set the exposure to what I thought was the correct exposure, two stops under, four stops under, as well as auto just to see what it would do. And without color correction, obviously the correct exposure looks best. However, after I color corrected all four to try and match the look, I found the shot that was only two stops underexposed to be the best, as well as far better than any of the shots that hadn't been color corrected. As you can see, it's got better contrast, less overexposure and less noise. And how you expose your shots is definitely a personal choice, but I find slightly underexposing gives me enough flexibility in color correction to bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights to get an even exposure overall. Shooting slightly underexposed also gives you the advantage of using a lower ISO and higher shutter speed, and that will be invaluable. Now for a bonus tip. Always keep your lens clean. You don't want a smudged lens when you're going out shooting at night. And if you're into creating cool 360 video shots, choosing your exposure is one thing, but what's more important is knowing the creative shots behind the settings so you can really wow your audience with amazing, unique 360 camera movements. So check out this video for 30 of my best and most creative 360 video shots.